after the original 13 colonies, all the other 37 states admitted to the Union since have been added by an act of Congress. Why not one more? Uh, the last two were in 1959, Hawaii and Alaska. Alaska residents recently brought one of their U.S. senators a new flag with 51 stars on it. Uh, asking their senator, uh, Lisa Murkowski of Alaska, to please support the admission of a 51st state. Please support the admission of Washington, D.C. as a new state. There's efforts actually all over the country to try to get Senate support for adding D.C. as a 51st state. I mean, D.C. does have a bigger, bigger population than Wyoming does, has a bigger population than Vermont does. D.C. residents pay as much or more in taxes as everyone else in the country. They do jury duty. They fight in wars. They vote for president. They do all the other things that all U.S. citizens do, but they don't have anyone who votes in Congress to represent them, which is the, the very definition of taxation without representation, which is a thing that's supposed to be a thing in this country. There was a referendum among D.C. residents in 2016 as to whether or not they wanted to become a state. Eighty-six percent of D.C. residents said, yes, we would like to become a state. The U.S. House of Representatives is likely to vote very soon to make D.C. the 51st state, which would then send it to the Senate. That's why the, the focus of advocates for D.C. is more on trying to bring senators along. The House vote is basically a fait accompli. The House will vote that D.C. statehood should become reality. Nevertheless, today's D.C. statehood hearing in the House was redonk. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Um, in terms of the Republican arguments against D.C. statehood, Democrats are essentially unified now that D.C. ought to be a state. It used to be an inter-party inter fight within the Democratic Party. Uh, Democrats are basically all come around to the idea that D.C. ought to be a state. Republicans are basically all opposed, but they're having a hard time articulating exactly why they're opposed. For example, Republican Congressman Glenn Grothman of Wisconsin insisted today that Washington, D.C. can't be a state because Washington, D.C. doesn't have any mines, as in, as in the underground places where miners work. D.C. doesn't have that, so clearly D.C. can't be a state. <laughs> D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser was testifying at the time that Congressman Grothman raised this objection. She did have to concede the point, saying, Congressman, it's true, we do not have any mines. But maybe that shouldn't, shouldn't settle the issue. Republican Congressman Jody Heiss of Georgia then demanded to know how on earth Washington, D.C. could become a state since D.C. has no car dealerships. Ah, I do remember the part of the Constitution where it spells that out. No taxation without representation, no cruel and unusual punishment, no being forced to quarter soldiers, right? And then nobody gets to be a state without at least one major car dealership. <laughs> Mines and car dealerships or the absence thereof. That was the argument from the Republican side today about why D.C. can't be a state. Incidentally, D.C. actually has car dealerships. <laughs> why is that the basis on which this decision should be made? Anyway, uh, I do not know what the United States Senate will ultimately do about D.C. statehood, uh, but the House is going to pass the bill to make D.C. a state. And after they do that, you would still be more likely to find a, you know, mountaintop removal mining operation with a Chevy dealership on top in D.C. than to find 10 Republican senators who are going to agree to this. So I don't know what the Senate is going to do. But like everything else, this does probably depend on Democrats getting it together to reform the filibuster. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.